the Grand Canyon of the South, the Brake Center State Park. That's where we're spending the day on this episode of I Want to Do That. Well, we've managed to catch up with Park Superintendent right here at the Rhododendron Lodge and Conference Center. And Austin Bradley, thank you for meeting us here. Well, thank you, Shannon, for being here. In a nutshell, can you give us just an idea of some of the things you guys offer? We offer all kinds of opportunities from backcountry experiences with hiking and backcountry camping on the Pine Mountain Trail to whitewater kayaking on the Russell Fork River. We have cabins on the lakefront and, and, uh, and camp, a campground that ranges all the way from primitive to full hookup sites. Um, in terms of activities, Shannon, we offer a full range of, uh, you know, we have a restaurant, we have a water park here. Um, with water slides and, and a lazy river. We also have a visitor center uh, where our park historian uh, offers all kinds of uh, programs from hatchet throwing Ooh. to uh, a moonshine steel demonstration and a gristmill demonstration. And, and all that's offered free of charge, the program. All right, well, a lot of people are already saying, I want to do that. So if we're new, we're coming into the park, where's a good place to start? Probably, just like I mentioned, the visitor center uh, with our historian Carl Mullins would be a great place to begin our journey today. How about let's go? Absolutely. Well, we came up here to the visitor center in the Brakes Park and we ran up on what looks like a moonshine steel. And we also found a historian, Carl Mullins, who will tell us all about it. Tell us about this moonshine steel. Well, appreciate it, will do. This is called a turnip top. Uh, it's pure copper. This is a furnace that goes all the way down to the bottom. This is the cap that's removable. These barrels are pyramid barrels. And what they do is they Put the main three ingredients is grain, water, and sugar. But about 12 to 14 days, it would pyramid and be ready to roll. And then it's called mash. So what would happen now, he'd take the cap off, pour it down into the pot, put the cap back on, take flour dough or mud even, seal the seams here, and then put a weight on top of this cap. Very important that you put a weight. It would go from here into a thumping keg. From the thumping keg into the worm. Now the thumping keg is used as a kind of an intermediate course to keep all the pressure off. So this vapor would run down through the, throughout the worm and come out here. About 200 proof. Automobiles would even run on it. They'd have to cut it down before you could really drink. You know, who wants to drink 200 proof unless you wanted to really get stoned? So cutting it means one part water, one part, part lightning. It's about 95 proof, and you could drink it. It'd go down just as smooth as a cold spring mountain water. Would. Coming up next, we're going to catch up with Austin again and have lunch at the Rhododendron Restaurant. had an exciting morning already in the Brakes Center State Park and it's time to eat some lunch. So where else to eat when you're in the Brakes but the Rhododendron Restaurant. We found Austin again and I'm telling you, you did a good thing when you pointed us toward Carl. 
Well, thank you. Yeah, Shannon, Carl is great. He gets positive comments all the time. Uh, uh, he offers tons of free programs throughout the year and, and just a wonderful guy to be around. But before we start doing anything else, tell me about the restaurant. A lot of people come up here to eat. Sure, they do. Uh, it's very popular among the local crowd and also with their visitors. And it's a full service restaurant. At this time of year, it's open from 7 a.m. till 9 p.m., serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And, uh, you know, our focus here is mainly just southern specialties, um, scratch made dishes. All right, well, thank you for showing us around and telling us where to eat. Now, after we're finished, you know, what is something else we can get out here that, that maybe people don't know about around here? Sure. Uh, one, of the, one of the more popular activities that w was less known in the past, but that's becoming more popular, mm -hmm. is geocaching. I've uh, heard of it. I've never done it. It sort of almost was intimidating because it's the right. coordinates and stuff, but is it really? It's not that hard, is it? It, it really isn't, and, and our staff try to make it easier for you and uh, we actually rent I think it's like five dollars um, you know five dollars for so many hours uh, we rent handheld GPS units that are preloaded with all the geocaches in the park um, how many caches do you have here? Yeah, the park has over 60 caches, and, and among geocachers, it's known as one of the better places in the local areas to cache. But if we're going to burn this lunch off, I know you've got hiking and, and biking trails and things like that. Right. What's something else we could do to, to get our cardio going this afternoon? Well, one of the most exhausting but fun things that you can do in the park is definitely uh, visit the boat dock. Okay. And at the boat dock, we have everything from hydro bikes to paddle boats. Hydro bike? I don't yeah. think I've heard of that. Yeah, it's a, a lot of people haven't. I mean, paddle boats are a little bit more uh, common, but hydro mm -hmm. bikes are actually like a, a bicycle that you can ride on the water. They're meant for a single user and they're a lot faster than the paddle boats. I think that's one of those, I want to do that thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I think we're going to head over there after lunch it's near the water park too, isn't it? It is. It's right beside the water park. So maybe we can check the water park out after the boat dock. We might do it. Sounds good. Thank you. We're going to eat our lunch and then head over that way. Well, here it is. This is one of the hydro bikes that Austin was telling us about while we were eating lunch that you can rent right here at Brake Center State Park. We're going to get on this thing and see how it goes, but if you want to come and do this, it's at Laurel Lake, right beside the new water park at the Brakes. Many people bring their fishing poles when they visit the Brakes, and Laurel Lake is a popular fishing spot. You can catch largemouth bass, bluegill, and even catfish, but fishing from the bank is not your only option. You can take your fishing poles on anything that you can rent on Laurel Lake. That's the paddle boats, the john boats, or even the hydro bikes. The hydro bike I rode actually had cup holders and a small dry box which could easily hold your bait. So when you plan your trip to the Brakes Interstate Park, don't forget your fishing pole. Well, I can tell you that I definitely like the hydro bikes at Brakes Interstate Park. You can rent them at Laurel Lake. They go so much faster than traditional paddle boats, but boy, they're a workout. We're here at the Tommy Hawk uh, place. Back in the 1700s, uh, Tommy Hawk was worn in the belt of about every Native American and frontiersman. Uh, they used it for the purpose of food, war, attacking one another. And sometimes at the end of the day when the they wasn't doing anything and they needed to play. They had Tommy Hawk throwing contests. I'm going to ask my seasonal interpreter here to throw for me and she'll give you a little demonstration of what we're talking about. Then I get to try it. Then you get to try it and we'll all step back. Right behind the moonshine still at the visitor center in the breaks is where I spent several frustrating minutes throwing those Tommy Hawks at the target. It took about 30 attempts to get one to stick, but when it happened, it was totally worth it. And since we were already at the visitor center, the crew and I decided to take Austin's advice and try our hand at geocaching. Austin. 
Austin told us there are over 60 geocaches located inside the Brakes Interstate Park, and hunting them has become very popular. Worldwide, there are over 2 million geocaches hidden for modern treasure hunters to find. Geocaching can take you to amazing places all over the world, or even just to a place in your own hometown that you've never been before. To get started, go to geocachingwithac.com. Try it out, put in your zip code, grab a GPS or your smartphone, and you'll be amazed at how many are practically in your own backyard. Next up, we're going to visit the Brakes Water Park. It's called Splash in the Park. And boy, do I make a splash. This summer, if you and your family visit the Brakes Interstate Park, you have to come and check out Splash the Water Park here at the Brakes. Josh, you're the park manager of the water park, and uh, you've got to be proud of this facility. Oh, I'm extremely proud of this facility, as well as extremely proud of my staff, and everybody seems to really be enjoying their summer as they come and see us this year. It's a short day trip for a family to come out. It's not very expensive either to get in. Our prices, um, we charge by height. So if you are over four feet tall or 48 inches tall, $7. And if you are under 48 inches tall, the prices are $5. And that's for all day? That is for all day from 10 a.m. until we close. That's affordable for anybody who's watching and everybody's watching now, they're saying, I want to do that. Yep. Tell me a little bit about some of the attractions here. Uh, well, um, we have uh, four different water slides. You've got room for the kids to play and you've got plenty of chairs for mom and dad to lay out in the sun so everybody can enjoy yep, it. Yep, this is definitely a family park. Wow, well, I'll tell you what, I found a spot way up on top that I want to go and just get a look at this whole place. Oh yeah, it gives you an amazing view. The top of the slide tower gives you an over top view of the entire water park. Well, I'm not leaving until I go up there and take a look. going to come up to the top to get the best view of the water park and yeah it's the best view of the water park but guess what the guys aren't going to let me go back down the steps so I guess they're going to make me pay for saying I want to do that when I looked up at the top and said I want to do that I got a free breaks t-shirt out of the deal so here goes I can't even talk right now. I guess the best thing to say is I got two words for you guys. Take two. This one's faster. This one's supposed to get me to the bottom. No, not a chance. For behind the scenes photos and more information from this episode, go to ekbtv.com.